the Canon R5 in 2024, is it worth it? Yes. N no. No. Maybe? What's up? My name is Chris Tejas. I'm a photographer and videographer, and I'm based in Ontario, Canada. I mainly shoot portraits, events, weddings. If, if there's a person in the photograph, I like to take it. Recently, I picked up the Canon R5 for a pretty specific reason. See, I was shooting on the Lumix S52X, and that camera is incredible. It is an amazing video camera, beautiful stills, and overall, just like an, probably the best camera money can buy for its price point, bar none awesome camera. I just was having a couple of really important issues with that camera that I couldn't solve and it was getting in the way of me doing my job. You know, primarily shooting weddings. I had three weddings in one week where I was just hitting my head against the wall with some of the very strange choices that Lumix made in their exposure preview uh, settings and it was causing me to under and overexpose all the time in, in a way that was just adding a lot of extra frustration to my workflow later. This could largely be solved with a firmware update, but nobody seems to be talking about it or dealing with it. And so I was just getting a little bit too frustrated. It happened to be that my friend Dimitri was looking to get a second S52X because he does wedding films and he had the, the Canon R5. For me, I kind of wanted the opposite. I really wanted to just focus in more on what I'm doing with my photography and not do quite as much video as I was doing in the past. So we decided to go for a trade and it was a great option. And that's my backstory. That is why this camera was a yes for me. I want to talk about a few of the reasons I think this camera is a yes and a few of the reasons I think it's a no. And hopefully that'll help you to decide if in 2024 you should really be picking up this camera. The first reason it's a yes for me actually has to do with this camera here. This is the Canon 5D Classic. I love the sound of that. Um, this camera, I adore using it. I love the way it feels. I love the way it's set up. And in a lot of ways, I think that Canon has stuck to some of its sort of ergonomic principles and philosophies from this camera all into their mirrorless lineup. It doesn't feel the same, but it feels um, like it, it is the kind of natural successor moving into things like the Canon R5, R6, R6 Mark II, and now the R5 Mark II. I can see where the lineage came from and it makes sense. So when I was looking to pick this up, knowing how much I love this camera and the, R, the, uh, the 5D Mark II, it just made sense for me to, to look at the R5. Certainly I don't need all the megapixels, but I do find that uh, because I like to work with a more limited range of primes when I'm shooting weddings, it allows me to crop in certain scenarios where I didn't have time to switch over my lens to a longer lens or or things like that. Sometimes having that extra megapixel count can be a bit of a, um, a hindrance because it's just bigger files, it's more to deal with. But I find with weddings, for my scenario where I do like to be able to punch in every once in a while and, and do that cropping, it can be really helpful. I'm also shooting in the compressed RAW format, so it's not like files are massive, massive. They're they're still big, but they're not as big as they would be. And finally, I just, I love Canon colors. I like working with their files. I find that they work really nicely with, with how I like to edit. And, and I don't think like color science or like specific colors from brands really matters as much. You can get away with pushing and pulling most files to the point that you need to from any system. I just find that the way that a lot of the Canon files come out of camera are close to the style that I like to edit and they just seem to work for me. Um, I actually found that uh, that was pretty similar with the, the Lumix as well. I just found the Lumix to be a little more contrasty um, and a little bit heavier blacks than maybe I was used to, but was still totally fine. So that's basically why this worked for me. I think if you're somebody who's shooting primarily photos, you don't need to do a ton of video work and uh, you enjoy working with the Canon system, this is a great, great option. So what makes this camera a no? Well, if you are shooting a lot of video, I probably wouldn't spend the money on this camera. Not because it doesn't take great videos. It does, it, it really does a beautiful job with video. I just think there's little things about it that feel a little outdated. Like it has a record limit on it. You can only record for 30 minutes, which is just kind of dumb at this point. I understand why that was implemented from a tax tariff perspective, I don't even know if those are the right words, but um, it just is frustrating that you have to stop after 30 minutes. I don't encounter a lot of scenarios where I need to go over 30 minutes, but like tomorrow I'm filming some interviews and I know I'm gonna need to 
have them pause at some point so I can start my recording again. And that's just, I don't know. I don't understand why that is a thing anymore. Another thing to think about is overheating. I know people say that uh, either this camera overheats like crazy or the firmware fixed it. I think it's kind of somewhere in between. I haven't had any issues yet, but I haven't pushed it to its absolute limits with the 4K60 yet, so we'll have to see. I did do a lot of 4K60 recording, but I was in a arena, so that doesn't really give you a good sense of things. So that kind of remains to be seen. I also don't think that the autofocus in video is quite as good as some of the newer Canon cameras. So if I was really looking to do a lot of hybrid or primarily video and I wanted to stick with Canon, I would be looking at something like the R6 Mark II. I think that's just a better option. I really don't think you need the higher megapixel count in most scenarios. It takes a little bit of a hit on the low light performance because of that and the R6 Mark II does a better job overall in that scenario. I have shot with the R6 Mark II a fair bit as well and, and it never really let me down. I never felt like I needed to have more megapixels or anything like that, but your experience may vary. So think about what you realistically need in terms of how you deliver your photos and go from there. So to round that all up, the things that this camera has going for it is great color science, very, very good autofocus. It's lovely to use, the ergonomics are great, the menu system is great. It produces beautiful images, you have high megapixel count. The things I think that it struggles with a bit, low light performance isn't 100%, the video specs on it I think are very good, but I think the actual implementation of video on this camera is not quite as good as something like the R6 Mark II, or even the R8, I think it's a great camera if you don't need dual memory cards and you're okay with a smaller battery. Um, and finally, I would just say that like for the price point of this camera, you could pick up probably a more compelling option if you are shooting hybrid. Would I spend the extra money on the R5 Mark II at this point? Probably not. I don't think I need that camera yet. I got to use it a little bit and it was really nice. I mean, it felt like a good camera and uh, I'm sure it's an incredible camera to use. But if you're mainly just doing photo, I don't think it's the upgrade you need to be doing right now. I would save that money and just, just wait because this camera's gonna do everything you need it to do. So Canon R5 in 2024, yes, but no, but maybe depending on your scenario. Hope that helps. Peace.